Hi guys, welcome back to our video again. So today we got a test right this old school classic Volkswagen Beetle. Currently this is a 1976 register Beetle. It's running currently classic plate. So you see the red, half red, half yellow plate. In order for a classic plate to be on the road, you have to use a coupon which allows you to have over 20 over to 40 over days to be on the road. Other than that, it should be parked privately. So you can see that's the headlight, that's the signal light. And then it has this very old school kind of uh, thick tall sidewall wheels. So it has a disc brake at the front. And then we have a drum brake at the rail. So all these are quite old school. In order to open this up, you have to press this button and the door actually bounces open. So this car is uh, the grandfather of Porsche 911. So to say that its engine is at the rear, so you just need to open this up and you can see this uh, 1.6 liter boxer engine, air cool. So as you can see, the car is pretty small. But however, the bumper is sticking quite further out from both front and also the rear. So let us get in. Okay, the cabin is pretty small. As you can see, the space here is not much to squeeze in. Oh. So we can see the interior it doesn't have a head rest and the passenger area is actually quite spacious and then you have this uh, deck here where you can place a lot of stuff and all these buttons are all very mechanical so it's just a pull knob this is your headlight, pull one time it's a headlight and then pull another time high beam and then this is the viper so you need to pull so this is to open up the front so you need to pull this and then we can come over here and do to open this up so basically this is the storage where you can hold it okay so you can also adjust the seat okay it's all very mechanical this is this two knob is basically to adjust your seat forward backward also adjust the seat height with uh, this gear and the other thing is uh, this area here is quite small uh, especially this part here so so much space uh, like a modern car where you can put your left Foot or the foot that using the clutch, it basically will hit the center pillar quite easily. So the key is also pretty old school, and then this is the keyhole. Okay, because it's an old car, so you have to fiddle with the key in order to turn it on. So I just turn it on. Give some oil. Give some petrol. Okay, you can hear. It's uh, powered up. So let us go to check out the exhaust loop. Okay, here is a boxer engine. So this is the twin pipe. Pretty cute. Okay, this uh, device comes with an aircon. The aircon mount is actually here. Unfortunately, there's still a seat belt here because the cars that are after 1975, I think, needs a seat belt. Anything before that, don't need because of the seat belt rules. So let's do this. So handbrake crush in so it comes with a uh, four speed left up gear one gear two gear three gear four and then the reverse is actually press down and then do a c back in this is the reverse because it's a very old car so the gear stick is quite loose and because it's an old car so the knob is mechanical okay so this is uh, to adjust your a side mirror and okay, let's go for a test right so gear one the signal light is here so I just uh, turn on so let's get out of the car park okay so very old school kind of window crank down $8 ticket so we need to crank it up again so there's a lot of uh, work to drive a manual car so this is not the original mirror because it's quite huge. It blocks almost like this side of the windshield, the top part. And the windshield is pretty small. It also has a blind spot mirror. And it also has a side mirror with the blind spot circle. 
that's very useful because the side mirror is actually very magnified so you can't really see more than the direct lane it's not very useful I would say because it's too magnified and uh, you can't really see much the magnifying or the blind spot mirror really helps a lot okay there's this modern radio and the brake isn't very good although it's front this real drum so you can see that this is a very cute dashboard basically your <laughs> speed and also your tank look at the dash you only see this two ignition light and also the engine oil this is your hazard light where you need to pull it out in order to activate it okay so it has the aircon three speed okay the aircon is from the rear so the front isn't very cooling especially on a hot sunny day okay so you have to brake really early because the brake is not like your modern car and the brake pedal feel is uh, pretty wooden so you have to really step really 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 hard in order to get it to work okay and you can hear the squeaking sound because of the drum brake the real drum brake okay the real seat is pretty small as you can see there's only like a very limited space here for leg room but the front has a lot of leg room uh, you can see my whole legs are stretched straight okay, and this is the standard uh, mirror and also uh, sunscreen so this is the only night light here okay so that's the only light you have inside and stationary you can feel the vibration from the car on the steering wheel okay, I think I'm on the wrong gear so this guy stores pretty easily if you are not used to manual bike oh sorry manual car so ride too much motorcycle okay we are now at gear 3 so it's at about 40 km so although it's an old car air cool it uh, do have certain power okay it's more than what i expected so generally when you floor the accelerator it do pick up but uh, not as quickly as you wish it would be but it does of course you have to be on the right gear so now we move on to gear 4 so you see up up slope is a uphill battle it's not moving up any speed although i already floored the accelerator so with the one day experience with this classic car i would say that whenever you are driving a classic car you can't be in a rush, you have to do things slowly and in the right way else it will create a lot of frustration for you because it's hard to handle the gear stick is uh, very big as you can see we are already at gear 4 we still can shake the gear stick it's not like a modern car where everything is firm okay so we are cruising at 80 plus cool so we keep left because it's an old car we don't want to push it so we won't go into detail about the suspension and stuff because it's an old car I mean the suspension is of course not top of the line and uh, because of that so when you are doing like a turn on higher speed there's a lot of body roll meaning it's just like driving a commercial lorry or something like that so you'll feel the roll pretty significant uh, as long as you are not driving at high speed this classic though it's actually quite comfortable to cruise around the steering is not straight so you have to constantly control I mean same thing I guess it's because of its age at least this car is able to keep up with the modern traffic the other good thing is that you will never get a speed ticket on this vehicle basically uh, it's not the fastest car it doesn't accelerate very quickly once you are in third gear the second is not bad but the first you will have to drag it uh, which I don't like because it, it sounds very aggressive to the engine so I believe that the Beetle is a classic so from my understanding it started on the early 1938 or 1940s all the way until recent I think recent decade where Volkswagen decided to end production of this Beetle so it's early in the morning 
we hope that there is no traffic congestion ahead because using a manual car with a foot clutch is something that I don't want to do half clutch all the way and the other thing that the clutch is really really deep so you can you know stretch your whole leg out in order to engage fully so maybe it's uh, the seating issue as we can say the steering wheel is very near to our thigh there's a tendency that we will move the seat further back and then causes the reach to be further but I think it's a give and take lah. so either you want a more confident clutch control or more space for you to move in and out of the vehicle easily so there's no backlight on the dash so these are some of the footage that we got last night so basically how it is to be driving it at night so riding it at night is pretty cool because uh, the weather is not so hot and the aircon is working perfectly very chilling so this is the light switch apparently as you can see uh, the odometer doesn't have light at night so this is the low beam which is pretty cute and then these are the high beam so pretty much as you can see so that's the real light and then these are the signal light okay so these are the real tail light okay so we try this viper so the viper is a turn turn knob for two speed interesting it's not pull, so this is the only turn knob, the rest are all pull knob. Okay, let's see if we can overtake this lorry. Signal out, check blind spot, floor it. So it's picking up, it's picking up, slowly but surely. So we are at 70. So we can overtake, so no issue, even if it's an old beetle. The whole car is quite bouncy. The seat is actually quite comfortable, although it doesn't have a headrest. So generally riding on the highway, it's a pretty comfortable ride. Basically, you just cruise. Not much of a clutch and gear shifting. So now we move on to riding it in the city. So the start-stop traffic with all the traffic light. You can hear the clanking sound of the gear. Okay. I guess it's because it's a very old car. You have to yank the gear stick in order to get it into gear. I'm not sure whether the aircon is a default or it's a add-on later on to modernize this vehicle. This vehicle doesn't have power steering, so if you are stationary, you try to turn this in, it needs a lot of force. And especially doing parking, it's quite tedious. Basically, we will show you later when we are doing the parking okay because the gear stick is quite big so most of the time we will engage the wrong gear instead of one we will go to three so you cannot be too gentle on the gear stick when you are pushing it so you have to really yank it in order to get it into the right gear although this car is uh, pretty small in terms of size so the turning radius is uh, quite huge because there's no power steering so you tend to be a little bit lazier when you are turning the steering wheel you see this gear too the pickup is not that bad you still can get it done it's just that the, the car will be super noisy depends on what kind of ride you want what i can say is that this is not the most comfortable car that you can go for as compared to any modern cars and it's not the easiest to operate because it's a very manual manual I mean the old gen manual but however when you are driving this uh, classic car you get a lot of attention uh, that's for sure especially it's a Beetle it's very iconic so you do get a lot of thumbs up on the road where other users will look at you, the driver, the car, I mean the car like, more than the driver so that's for sure but it needs a little bit patient to drive it like I said it's an old car 
so you cannot rush it if you rush it then it will have a lot of uh, frustrating point like engaging the wrong gear the car bouncing here and there heavy steering and also very hard to park because there's no modern aid like your cameras or I would say that the mirror are not very helpful in modern traffic I guess it was designed where there are lesser traffic on the road overall it's a fun ride it's uh, much powerful than I expected generally it allows me to cruise at highway speed so that's good and in some case it also allows me to overtake certain slower commercial vehicle so that's uh, more than what I expected luckily it didn't rain throughout the day that we have this vehicle if not I'm not sure whether you will see seepage around the seal as the owner mentioned that because this is a very old car so you can't really do jet wash so jet washing will damage all the the rubber seal so you have to hand wash it so we have to do a three point turn basically we missed the block so we have to do a three point turn which that's a very tough part so we have to engage to reverse press it all the way down push to the left and then pull down and then do a C so hopefully it's engaged uh, we stall quite a few time doing oh no power steering doing this Sorry pigeons, scare the hell out of you. So we can park anywhere here. So let's do the parking. Okay, wow, this is damn hard to steer. So the parking is always the issue because I can't gauge. As you can see, it's uh, totally off. So I need to hit out a little bit more to adjust my angle to straighten it. And then to engage the right distance. I can't see the rear bumper, so that's the downside when you are doing reverse so I usually have to open up and see if it's good enough okay I think it's good enough so we head down and see whether it is okay good once you pull out the key uh, this thing just goes back and the problematic part is the door doesn't have a latch so it will fully open if you let go and you will scratch the car next to you so you have to always hold it very weird in order to close the door well, you have to really slam it, okay? And the whole car will shake a little bit. You can see. So, the car will shake a little bit. If not, it's not closed properly. So, alright guys, that will be the end for this test drive for this classic Beetle. Thank you for watching this video. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.